to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, Jesus is speaking, let us pass over to the other side. This is Jesus now. A desire to advance, a desire to move to the next level of his ministry. And he encouraged his disciples with him and said, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, 36 now, they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships. Then a tragedy happened and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said, unto one another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him hallelujah now the bible is giving us a very interesting scenario here jesus is on his way to the other side and all of a sudden the bible says as they were going there arose a great storm of wind now storms are made up of two components one is visible, one is invisible. Please follow me carefully. Every storm is made up of water and wind. You are able to see the water and see it boisterous, but that water is empowered by wind that you may not be able to see. And that the storm arose on account of their desire for advancement. If they did not desire to move forward, there would be no need for any issue of a storm. It's amazing that many things that happen to us are not proofs that we are retrogressing. In fact, they are proofs that we are moving forward. The storm came because there was motion to move to the other side. There are many people who do not have storms in their lives and you think they are free. Is proof they are not going anywhere. Is proof they are not doing anything. They would have settled back and just resorted to remaining there and there would be no issue of storm. But the storm arose because they took the risk to go by sea to the other side. Are we together now? Many believers need to have a reorientation about what we call challenges and problems. Because sometimes the narrative we have about challenges is that um, the reason why the devil attempts to attack me is simply because I may not be a Christian or my faith. You know, we have this narrative. The moment you see people trusting God and having to push through storms, the usual narrative is that they do not have faith. And here is the Bible correcting our perception that Jesus, your Jesus, is on his way to the other side so that a decapolis will be healed. A decapolis will be saved. Remember, as you will be learning, that the storm was not about Jesus. The storm was not even about the disciples. The storm was about the destiny of ten cities. 
so that the attack that many times we face is not about us. You are too small a motivation for the devil to just invest his energy. In the, there is a bigger cause. Are we together now? There arose a storm of wind. Suddenly, a situation that was at ease became boisterous because the Savior was on his way to save a madman who would bring ten cities. The whole story was not about Jesus. It was not even about the disciples. You would think they did something wrong. But there were spirits. Listen carefully. Do you know that when they went over to the other side, the first person they met was the demoniac who told the demon Jesus was coming. The spirits that controlled that territory, the gatherings, that had kept that man in bondage and kept the city in bondage. The economy of that city was dependent on their fraternity with those spirits. That was why the moment the spirit went, their economy also went down. Look at everything that happened just because Jesus arrived there. Are we together? Then the Bible said that a storm of wind, very boisterous, the water began to come into the boat and the disciples were afraid. And they went and met Jesus sleeping. And they woke him and said, Master, wake up, we're in trouble. You are the one who brought us in this trouble. Take responsibility for the situation we are in. Isn't it amazing that sometimes when you get midway between your journey you you get angry you look back at those who motivated you your pastor who prayed for you the word he gave you you are angry if you did not motivate me i will not get into this marriage if you didn't motivate me i wouldn't get into this business i was minding my business you came in with a word that made me uncomfortable with my situation it's amazing that when we face challenges we usually look for who to blame and in this case they found Jesus. They attempted to manage the storm. And when they found out they did not have the ability to manage the storm, they went to Jesus. They didn't say, Jesus, save us. They said, carest thou not. So they are, they are rebuking Jesus here. Carest thou not that we perish. Pastor, are you aware that I'm looking for one billion naira? I came to you and I showed you a dream. And you told me God said 2021 is my year of advancement that I should move. Now I've started a project and midway there doesn't seem to be any help. I was, I was all right. Listen to me. Storms are very, very important tests in the life of believers. Now I know that this may not be a very popular teaching. But I'm showing you how people move from where they are. In fact... If you are truly making progress, you can validate your movement by the presence of storms. If your advancement does not send a signal enough to call the attention of the gate of hell to say, who is this making this progress? Many times, our ease is proof that we are not making progress. If you sit at home and you do not get in your car to go from one place to the other you have no business with traffic people experience traffic because they are moving they, while the traffic is on there are onlookers who are just watching they are not doing anything necessarily there arose a boisterous storm now please watch this there is a lesson to learn here i'm dealing with the issue of the storm that every storm is made up of two elements number one the wind and number two water are we together now? Yes. The water is the obvious one that you can see. But that that water is being powered by wind that you cannot see. Behind every physical problem. Look up please. Behind every physical challenge. Hear me. There are spirits and spiritual forces that empower them. Behind situations and circumstances that seem to defy solutions. There are spiritual forces that empower situations, empower men, empower conditions to be hostile against those who are making progress in this kingdom. So if your interpretation of challenges is just the individuals, the physical actors, you've gotten it wrong. 
Jesus knew that there was more than water. His concern was not even the water. When he was about to rebuke it, he said, peace be still. He was not just speaking to the water. He was speaking to the spirits that were manipulating the wind to make the water boisterous. Behind every challenge, there are spirits that are behind it. The same way behind every progress and exploit, the Holy Ghost is also behind it. People do not just make progress because they are well intentioned. It takes an agency of the spirit to move people. Are we together now? This is very, very important. Paul, it was Apostle Paul who said, I desired once and again to come to you. I desire to move from this location to come and be a blessing to you. He said, but Satan hindered us. Satan is still in the business of attempting to hinder men. Hinder men from stepping into strategic relationships. Hinder men from stepping into strategic alliances. Opening them up to opportunities that can lift them. And here comes the manifestation of spirits. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare over someone tonight that every force that stands your way here at this conference, in the name of Jesus, may it be silenced forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? That is when you make up your mind and say, the name of Jesus, I will be a giver like never before. It's time to move to the other side. Suddenly, things begin to happen and you're finding out that your children are getting mysteriously sick and all this is happening and people are calling from home and say, care us not. You see it now. And whilst that is happening, you're saying, Lord, but I made a commitment to love you and serve you. Just when you make up your mind that I will be a faithful worker, I'm going to give my best to God, my best to this church, suddenly situations begin to arise. Learn to read the writings on the wall. It is not about you. It's about where you are going. When you focus on yourself, you will be misled. The devil looks broad and he knows that if this woman becomes a CEO, I know how many believers will be employed in this company. If this woman becomes a CEO, I know. So the moment he was there in the board meeting while they were discussing you and the moment your name came, he said, no, this woman calls upon the name of the Lord. We know the implication of her lifting. Suddenly a storm arises. Be careful when you talk about people who are going through things. It's not necessarily about them. Many times it's about where they are going. It's about a salvation that you may even be part of. Sir, why are you suddenly in trouble? Why is your company seeming to no dive? You've always been an intelligent fellow. I know you as a skilled person. What is this disfavor all around your life? It's a storm. Are we blessed? Just when they're about to give you an, an appointment that will put you in a position where people will model your life, your children begin to go haywire. Where is this coming from? Learn to interpret the writings on the wall. Many of the attacks in our lives, I tell you, they are not about us. It is about something that is bigger than you. Have you not noticed that when seasons are about to change, it looks like you, you almost know that a season has come to an end and another one is about to start because strange from, it looks like there are attacks from nowhere. All of a sudden, your car doesn't seem to work. Everything seems to annoy you. Just when you want to give God praise, your child comes with a report, a result an evil report, you hold that result and look at it and say, what is this? Have I wasted my money? Then you suddenly begin to feel a pain somewhere and say, in the name of Jesus, I, and, and it looks like you are overwhelmed. And sometimes you can turn to God and say, carest thou not. Is that not what we say? Don't blame the disciples. Carest thou not. God, I have served you. I'm faithful. My seeds are speaking in the house of God. Why are you asleep allowing me to go through these things? Why are you asleep allowing my children to go haywire? Why are you asleep allowing my life to not make progress? What is it about a job that you cannot give me, oh God? What is it about lifting that you cannot give me? 
And here Jesus is lying down quietly. It's amazing. They were not interested in his presence. They were interested in his speaking. Because he was there. You would think they would have been comforted that his presence was there with them. <laughs> they said, Jesus, it's not your presence that we are looking for. Wake up. You are here, but wake up. We need you to wake up and do something. Do something that our senses can relate with. And Jesus said, if the boat turns, will it not turn with me too? Why don't you keep quiet and watch what my power can do? The first thing he rebuked was their faith. He said, there is something about my presence you do not know. You want me to relate in a way that your mind and your senses can find comfort in. Draw strength from the fact that Jesus is still in the boat. Ah, someone prophesied to yourself that in the midst of my situations, Jesus is still in the boat. I know my home looks like it's in disarray. November, December seemed like nothing would happen, but Jesus is still in that boat. Keep talking while he's in my boat. My security is that even if I don't hear his voice, his presence is still with me. He may not always speak, but I find comfort in the fact that Jesus is still in the boat. Please sit down. There are many times when he's with you, but may not speak. But the carnal man does not understand the power of divine presence. You would want to hear him so that you will find comfort. And Jesus said, Lend this, your faith, your conviction. I am not a man. I am the almighty, the master over storms. If I am in your boat, no matter how it is rocking, find rest. They were angry that Jesus was at rest. They expected him to panic like them. Isn't it amazing how how you find out that when people are at rest sometimes it annoys you because you can't understand what is the basis of that rest are you not aware that there is a pandemic are you not aware that people's jobs it looks like they are going to downsize where is your panic let's be humans together and someone tells you I have found rest the Lord is my light and my salvation this is the basis of my rest and sometimes the rest of faith can annoy faithless people Are discussing storms Jesus is asleep he's in that boat the word of God the logos of God that created the wind that created the rain created the sea and now he's asleep and because he's not speaking listen every time God is silent learn to discern the voice of silence there is a, silence itself is a language there is something God is saying the moment God keeps quiet find rest he's telling you I am well aware but the carnal man would always want God say something to me and he's quiet Lord speak about my job and he's quiet speak about my family he's quiet speak about the next level he's quiet carest thou not Lord, carest thou not? Are you not aware that I need to pay my rent? Are you not aware that I just lost my job? My integrity serving you is what has brought this tragedy to my life. It's painful when good things lead you into trouble. They were innocently following the master. It was their loyalty to Jesus that got them into that trouble. It was not rebellion. They were not rebels. He called on them. Look at, they were holding his hand to help him in ministry. And now they are in trouble. How do you respond when your sincere desire, when your love for God, it was your coming to church that landed you this trouble? There are battles you had no business fighting if you were not a serious Christian. But now that you've made up your mind that in this entire idol worshipping family, here comes a voice that will lift up the name of the Lord. Then a storm arises. If I understand when you go through tragedy because of lack of wisdom or carelessness or irresponsibility. That's fine. But what happens when storms arise because of truth? What happens when storms arise because of your commitment to God? Ask Joseph what led him to prison. 
Ask Jesus what led him to the cross. Ask the apostles what led them to prison. There are times that both the good and bad meet at the same place. In the prison cell, Joseph and the wine press are met at the same place. At the cross, both the criminals and Jesus. Be careful when you enter. There are times. Oh goodness. There are times that life will bring you to the same location where lazy people are. And you are wondering, what am I doing here? I'm a hard-working person. What am I doing here? I shouldn't be poor. I shouldn't go through this. I sincerely put money in a business hoping it will lift me. Now it's brought me to the same condition where lazy people are. Stop. Is God blessing us tonight? This is a word from the Lord to help you interpret the happenings in your life. It's embarrassing when you find yourself where you should not be. Joseph, what are you doing in the prison? Only criminals stay here. A man who has a covenant with God. The son of Jacob. What are you doing here? Jesus, you are the son of the living God. What are you doing naked on the tree? And he's silent. And Satan said, you would have bowed down to me. I gave you a chance. I bought that destiny. And you would have. I, I gave you an opportunity. I came to you and I said, bow to me. And I will give you the kingdoms of this world. It was your determination to get to the other side. You are so desperate to save men. You are so desperate to save them. You are willing to die. Now look at you. The Lamb of God. The Bible calls it the hidden wisdom of God. That the princes of this world did not know. If Satan had known the drama that was happening in the cross. He would bring Jesus down from that cross. It was the storm that, let me tell you this, every time storms happen, look well. There is something God is doing. He's using those storms sometimes to shield you. It was the killing of the children that took Moses to the palace where he was trained to become a mighty person. If he was not hidden in the palace, he would have died. So on one hand, while it was Causing other people to die. Moses found his way. It was the hunger that came upon the entire world. That took Joseph and his brothers to Egypt. Where eventually they found refuge. Storms may look strange. But they have an advantage in them. They teach you lessons. Storms can give you stamina and power. So that what you were afraid of yesterday. You are not afraid of it tomorrow. Have you watched yourself go through, when you see this, you say, I know. You came in 2017, I cried. You will not see my tears again. There, 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 listen, there are times in life where you become so fortified. While you are greeting people, hallelujah, how are you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And someone says, sir, I hear that you just lost your job. I hear that your wife is sick. I hear that your car just spoiled. You say you are right. So why the joy? He said, I have learned by experience that every time storms come, I shouldn't focus on the storm. I should verify whether Jesus is in that boat. If he's in that boat, find rest. If he's in that boat, find rest. Are we blessed? Can I tell you this? There are messages that apply to certain people and doesn't apply to others. This is the message that in your lifetime, you must need this sermon. No matter how lazy or serious you are, you will need this sermon. Life will test you. Provided you are going to move to the other side, I give you a guarantee by the name of the Lord, storms will arise. It's true. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you shortly. But this is the truth. So I'm teaching you the dynamics of managing storms until you emerge victorious. He said, now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Hallelujah. So finally they get Jesus to wake up. And he says, what's going on here? And he said, you better join us in managing this. We've exhausted our skills. Storms reveal the limitation of your power and your ability. You see, because the pride of men on the strength of their achievement, sometimes it takes storms to bring you back to your knees. Because you will not, many of us on the strength of your obvious achievements, it will, it will not be easy to allow Jesus to take the center stage. The disciples exhausted their options. 
if they had a solution, I assure you they would not wake Jesus. So there are times that God steps back to give you an opportunity to see how limited you are so that it is that storm that brings you back. Remember you stopped praying when the promotion came. Remember you didn't have time for Bible study again. When your wife woke you, you said it's well. And something happened now that money could not solve, that intellect could not solve. And then you had to go back again and say, Jesus, I confess my weakness. I confess my limitations. Take your place. When Jesus arose, he said, now that you have acknowledged me, now that you have come to a point where you see that I am the master of the storm, that your peace is derived from me, he said, peace be still. This is the master speaking. It's amazing that 10 years captivity can come to an end the moment the master wakes up and says, peace be still. Can I tell you this? You know you are a Christian not just by the breakthroughs you are receiving. There are certain attributes the world cannot have. One of it is the peace of God. Not just peace with God. The peace of God. The hallmark of the benefits of your relationship with God is peace. The peace of God. He said, peace I give you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. Peace. Be still. He rebuked the spirit. These spirits were watching. Let's stop Jesus. Let's stop all these people from getting to the other side. And Jesus gets up. There was a drama there. Most times we don't learn from the storm. We focus on the victory and what happened. And now I'm bringing you back. To, let's look at what happened in that storm. The humiliation of the flesh happened in that storm. I know by my strength, I am the best staff in this company. And when you read scriptures like, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It doesn't make sense on the strength of, I mean, your room is full of accolades, full of all kinds of things. And God says, this is not so. I do not come into your life as an addition. I come into your life as the, the life-giving factor. And so if you think I am an extra luggage you are carrying, I will step back with honor. I love you. My presence will still be there. But there is a condition for hearing my voice. The condition for hearing my voice is that you must be willing to keep quiet and draw back. The voice of God is expensive. Let me tell you this. The voice of God is expensive because when he does speak, no matter what stands before you, it must give way. So when he keeps quiet, he knows how easy it is to get that solution. He will not waste that situation. His silence is because he's working on you. Listen, I'm speaking prophetically to someone. It does not cost God anything. Prime, listen, people slept as prisoners and woke up the next day as prime ministers. When God speaks, things change. So when he's silent, discern the dealing that his silence is bringing in your life. His silence can mean work on your character. Where you are going will not require this version of you. You need to work on yourself. The promotion is true. You have seen it in dreams and visions. But this version of you cannot be exalted to that position. His silence can mean learn to acknowledge me. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord, the Bible says, with all your heart. It says, and lean not on your own understanding. It knows you have understanding. It said, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, it says, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, um, what, it says in verse, in verse 7, it says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. There is the kind of wisdom that achievement brings to you. Read your Bible and see people who declared their rebellion against God. And they had results to show for it. God stepped back and their lives went down. And in that state, they acknowledged the God of heaven once again. Storms. The lessons that they teach. Because you see, there are levels when God leaves you without the training of the storm. It can destroy you. We are humans, so oh. there are levels of honor. There are levels of, of, I prayed a prayer many years, ma, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, 
May I never know the full extent of my impact. I know that it can destroy. Just give me a token. Let me just know I'm blessing lives. I don't want to know how far. And God answered that prayer. Can I tell you this? For as long as you are human, wearing flesh and blood, the uploads of men will keep having an effect on you. And sometimes the miracle of storms bring your life back to balance. They remind you that you are human. They remind you that you need God. They remind you that your dominion is not absolute dominion. It's a derived dominion. Derived from a relationship. It reminds you that the, the central focus of your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. More than the destination you are going. It reminds you that if God does not wake up over your life, you will not arrive there. Even though you are seeing it already. Hallelujah. Let us go to the other side. And there was a training. They didn't know that they were enrolling in a school. A school of wisdom. A school of character. A school of power. They thought they entered a boat just to go to the other side. And Jesus said, join me. Guys, one day you will be my apostles. I will not be here. I need to mentor you and I need to train you. One time Jesus was speaking to the people his disciples and Peter began to talk to him about his not dying. Satan came to use the compassion of Peter. Satan does not use only evil. He can use good to destroy. He used Peter's compassion. Jesus, you can't go to the cross. And Jesus looks at him and says, Satan, get thee behind me. And Peter is saying, me? He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith, here it is again, faith fails not. He says, and when you are strengthened, use this same formula. When you are converted, strengthen your brethren. That means when you see them, look beyond what they are doing and discern what spirit is operating through them. Because sometimes the kindness of people can stop you from moving forward. They can love you too much to allow you pass through certain things. Their compassion can be used by the devil to stop you from rising. Your relatives can love you too much. They say, look, I, I can't stand seeing you go through this. So that you can discern that even though my well-meaning mother, my well-meaning father loves me so much, I love them so much, but this is not the voice of God. When you are strengthened, converted, strengthen your brethren. Are we together? Let me hurry up so we can pray. Now he rebukes the wind and the waves. And the Bible says there was perfect stillness. As soon as they get to gathering, they meet this madman waiting for them already. That was the spirit that was causing that storm. They meet this madman and Jesus looks at him and now they begin to negotiate. Do not send us out of this region. You have come to bring salvation. Keep us here. Jesus rebukes them. Watch what happened. As soon as Jesus rebuked them, they went and entered a swine and people lost their businesses, lost jobs simply because Jesus arrived and certain spirits were dispelled. The man who was healed and delivered, the Bible says he single-handedly went to a decapolis and brought people to Jesus. If they did not take the risks to move. Do you know the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue. The same energy it takes to say I'm tired of this business. God is speaking to someone. You are midway and you can look back and go back and feel honorable for a while. Or you can make up your mind. Let them laugh while I move forward. Let them comment while I move forward. The miracle that storms bring in the life of believers. The Bible says, count it all joy, my brethren. When you go through diverse temptations, are we Bible students? Knowing this, that means let this knowledge give you stability. That the trying of your faith produces patience. And that let patience complete its work. 
I'm speaking to someone because in the midst of this conference, while everybody is laughing and jumping, you are crying. And say, oh Lord, let the, let the ministers that come to preach, let someone be able to discern what I'm going through and bring a word. In addition to this, it is true that you will laugh this year for sure, but discern what God is doing. His silence is not weakness. No, there is a lesson there. The last time he blessed you, you forgot him. You were so carried away by the accolades of men and he stood watching. And remember, the law is that in all your ways you acknowledge him. So his love and his mercy. Is it not in your Bible that he chastises those he loves? There is a formula. There is a non-negotiable condition for the making of great men. Among the training process is going through these storms. Not even Jesus was exempted from it. The way to the throne is the cross hallelujah it is why Paul said let no man trouble me I didn't jump classes in the spirit there is a scar that testifies that I passed through the training of the spirit dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.